Ah, Minnesota, what a great place to live. And I wanna keep it that way. Hi, I'm Heidi Highland with Heidi's Lifestyle Gardens. And our company has long been advocates of eco-friendly practices. We all understand the importance of protecting the integrity of our natural resources. Did you know that stormwater runoff is the number one cause of pollution in our lakes? I live on Gleason Lake and it's considered an impaired lake by the state of Minnesota. The runoff from my property first flows into Gleason Lake. Then it goes into the Minnehaha Creek. Next, the water goes to the Mississippi River. And finally, it ends up in the Gulf of Mexico. This problem is larger than my backyard. So I've decided to implement several water conservation practices to help restore my shore that you could adopt as well. The first technique I adopted was shoreline stabilization, which uses perennials and shrubs and trees to control erosion on this bank, help stormwater runoff from seeping in, and it also filters the fertilizers from your lawn. Another practice was our rain garden, and that helps the stormwater as it comes down the boulevard of our neighborhood, and it collects all in a big puddle and helps infiltrate right on site instead of going into the storm sewers. We also installed a rain box system. That's linking several rain barrels together to repurpose the rainwater. As an alternative to a downspout, we put in a rain chain which is a soothing way to enjoy the water as it lands on your roof and then goes into the landscape. Last fall, we installed a state-of-the-art irrigation system. It pulls water from the lake and it also uses a smart controller, which uses the latest technology to forecast weather patterns. This year, my project is to address a water runoff issue that looms large in my front yard. So check out my driveway, unsightly, I know. But this is what we were left with after construction. And there are no best management practices for stormwater currently. The rain simply comes off the roof, onto the driveway, out into the street, and then into the lake. So what are we gonna do about it? Well, we've decided to install a permeable paver system. And I'm gonna show you how it's done. We live in the Minnehaha Creek Watershed District, which is a local government unit that helps manage natural resources with their ultimate goal of improving water quality. When the Watershed District is first contacted by a homeowner, we first can help them look at what types of water quality projects they can do on their lot by taking a look at the runoff that comes off the impervious surfaces, such as the driveway, the roof, and look at where that runoff ultimately ends up. So Aldous, what can you tell me about Gleason Lake? Well, it was actually recently added to the impaired water bodies list. Uh, it's been impaired for excess nutrients, and a large cause of that is runoff coming from the lots surrounding this lake. Uh, but just as important is the runoff coming off the front of your lot, because that runoff ends up in the storm sewer system, which also empties out into this lake. So what are the things I should know before I consider a permeable paver driveway? Really, the first thing you want to do is look at the worth of doing the permeable pavement driveway. So you're going to want to redirect as much of your impervious surface on your site coming from things like your patio, from the roof line and downspouts. You want to redirect all of that to the permeable pavement driveway so you're capturing as much water as possible instead of just capturing the water that's falling directly onto your driveway. With Aldous's advice in hand, I contacted an excavator, scheduled my landscape crew, and took what I learned and applied it to the project. Let's get busy and start digging. Here at my home in Plymouth, I worked with the city's water resource manager to understand what soil types I have. It's a type C hydrologic soil, which means that it's a sandy loam. Now that drains more quickly than clay, but not as quickly as a sandy soil. It's important for you to partner with not only your local municipality, but your watershed district as well, because they will help you understand how to engineer your permeable paver system based on your soil types. So as you can see, we've done the excavation and we've created a three-tier system, each tier varying in depth from 21 to 36 inches and each one being sloped slightly backwards to hold all of the water in each tier. So the next step of this process is to use this polyurethane construction adhesive to put this 45 mil liner in place. 
we're going to make sure that we overextend all borders for double insurance that the water doesn't flow back into our foundation. So the first rock that we put into our excavated hole is about 12 inches deep. It's called a one and a half inch clear rock. Clear rock means there's no fines in it and that's what makes it a permeable paver system. Because in those voids of this larger rock, the water pools and it, then it can slowly infiltrate into our native soils. After the sub-base layer is put in, then we install four inches of this three quarter inch clear rock. The entire sub-base and base together gives the paver system its stability and strength. The four inch base layer serves as a transition between the one and a half inch rock and the three eighths inch rock. The edging, be it stamped concrete like we've added, or a row of pavers, is a critical part of the system as it holds the pavers in place. Without the proper installation of edging, the system can fail. There are many different shapes and colors of permeable pavers. You want to pick out a paver that goes with your architecture and that you like. This small 3 8 inch rock is what we use to put the pavers on. We sweep this rock in between the pavers. It allows the water to flow through as well as acts as a filter to trap any sediment that may clog the system. So check this out. Watch how quickly it disappears. So our permeable paver driveway is done. It's not only beautiful, but it's also functional. I've done my part in creating a positive impact on our environment. If you'd like to increase your property value, consider adopting some of these water-wise best management practices like we've done here. Some cities even offer incentives for homeowners to lead a more eco-friendly lifestyle. I'm Heidi Highland. Thanks for exploring.